Cancer on Biochemistry 26, Magnesium. Hello, it's Dr. Colleen Huber, a naturopathic medical doctor here in Tempe, Arizona. I'm here again today, July 10, 2019, in this ongoing series on cancer and biochemistry. Today I would like to give an overview of some of the many roles of the mineral magnesium in our metabolism, as well as the roles that magnesium plays against cancer and the cancer machinery. If you have seen my previous videos in this series, you are becoming ever more familiar with this chart. Thanks to the Sigma Aldrich Company, we have here a visual representation of some of what is known of the science regarding what happens to your food after you eat it. These are the pathways of our metabolism. Just to summarize, all of the food that you eat is of three basic types. Carbohydrates are here in green. And here in red are the amino acids that are breakdown products from proteins. And in blue, we have the fats. So that's it. That's all we get. No matter how monotonous or how exotic the diet, all we get is carbs, fats, and proteins. Now some would say that the whole purpose of eating it all, that is the climactic end result of all of this complication, is to provide the necessary materials for energy production here in the mitochondria so that our food may be converted to energy. Now just as all roads led to Rome in ancient Europe, as they say, these pathways throughout this chart may be likened to traffic patterns coming into this metropolis here, this mitochondria. If you saw my previous videos in this series, you know that our goal in helping to prevent or to reverse the process of cancer is to divert away from this pathway here the lactate dehydrogenase pathway. This is the one that takes pyruvate to lactate. This is the machinery of cancer. This is the mechanism that cancer uses to keep functioning. In order to have the best success against this cancer machine, we need to use the most plausible, feasible, and helpful competitor pathway. And that is this road here, this road down through the mitochondria. You may remember that when we provide the needed materials to allow these mitochondrial processes to run, when we have those raw materials at hand, we can then achieve that goal of keeping body resources away from taking the cancer pathway. And we can come down here and make the energy that we need for all those processes that we need just to continue living and thriving. Today, let's explore the role of magnesium in the mitochondria. Magnesium is perhaps the most widely used nutrient throughout the mitochondria, yet ironically, here in the United States, it is one of the most commonly deficient nutrients in our diets. Here are some healthy foods that are high in magnesium, avocados, almonds, and spinach. Magnesium is likely more useful throughout the entire mitochondrion than perhaps any other nutrient. That is, we know it is a cofactor right here together with the vitamin biotin, and getting pyruvate to convert to oxaloacetate. This is a massively important step because it is the first detour of our energies away from this cancer pathway. It is the first step along the correct fork in the road, away from here. However, magnesium also is important for this alternate step. It is a factor for pyruvate dehydrogenase, which converts pyruvate directly to acetyl-CoA. So this is two different ways, here and here, that magnesium provides immediate competition to the cancer pathway here. It's very, very useful in our fight against cancer. So hooray for magnesium here. Next, we get to this cycle containing both of those products, acetyl-CoA and oxaloacetate. Now that cycle has three names, the citric acid cycle, or the Krebs cycle, or the tricarboxylic acid cycle. In previous videos in this series, I showed the various steps of this cycle and the amino acids that are needed to keep running it or to keep pushing it around. This is why you have to be sure to include proteins in your diet in order to move the citric acid cycle and provide those substrates, the amino acids from here, to keep the cycle moving around. However, did you know that magnesium is necessary in six out of eight of these steps of the citric acid cycle? In other words, this necessary cycle is not going anywhere without adequate magnesium and without adequate proteins providing the amino acids needed. That magnesium is needed through three quarters of this cycle, I find absolutely amazing. But that's not all. Magnesium is also helpful in the electron transport chain here. It is essential for the function of 
complex one here, the first of the necessary steps in this electron transport chain. Also, magnesium is needed to maintain the difference in electrical charge across the inner mitochondrial membrane, an electrical charge difference, or mini battery, that is essential to the continued function of the mitochondria. It is the accumulation of hydrogen ions, which are positive charges, on one side of the membrane, right here in the inner membrane space, leaving negative charges here in the yellow area, in the matrix. And it is this difference in electrical charge, which is a key component in the production of the final prize of all the work, that is, the production of ATP, here, which is our unit currency of energy in the body. This article, from the Annals of Biochemistry, gives an overview of how this process works. And this one, from Science Direct, also explains it well. ATP is wonderful as a unit of energy, but sort of like having energy in a savings account. Maybe you want to or need to actually spend that currency. To do so, you have to break ATP, adenosine triphosphate, down to ADP, which is adenosine diphosphate. Well, magnesium is needed here again to help you spend and use your energy stores. Magnesium ATPase is an enzyme involved in the breakdown of ATP to ADP. So now you can actually use the energy that you went to all of this trouble here to store up. Wow, those are a lot of processes that magnesium is involved in. And I would say that all those different uses are what makes magnesium one of the most useful nutrients that we have and that we can use to detour away from the cancer pathway. Not surprisingly, magnesium is also essential in plants as the most essential nutrient to power chlorophyll production of energy, what we call photosynthesis in plants, and this is what keeps them alive and green. Well, that's all I have today. It's July 10, 2019. I'm Dr. Colleen Huber, and thanks for watching.